I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I was the head coach of the Punahou School Boys Varsity Tennis Team for 22 years, and we were fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. This show is based on my books, Beyond the Lines and Beyond the Game, and it's about inspiration, welcoming adversity, and building a superior culture of excellence. My special guest today is the American Volleyball Coaches Association National Player of the Year and a two-time NCAA National Volleyball Champion. He is Jakob Tella, and today we are going beyond national championships. Hey, Jakob, welcome back to Beyond the Lines. Hello, Rusty. Good to see you again. Happy to be here. Jakob, are you sure there's no more years of eligibility left with you? I wish. And if there is one, I'll take it. 100%. Oh, Jakob, I mean, there's going to be some big shoes to fill. <laughs> Just like I had my freshman year with Joe Worsley. But as we've seen, there's always guys going up to the vacation and really taking that leadership role in early. So... I'll, I'm happy to be an alumni now and follow the team throughout the year, so I cannot wait for next year. Well, you're so right. That's what great teams do. That's that's why you guys have such a superior culture of excellence. And Jakob, you grew up in Norway. What are some of the comparisons between or differences between Norway and Hawaii? I guess there's a lot more differences than uh, a likeness to Hawaii. Just overall, the whole environment. There is, well, winter and nine months of the year in Norway, and here is the summer all year, so it's a lot different. But for the things that are similar, at least, I'd say that, well, a lot of ocean, and I've always felt connected to the ocean, so just having that really close to where I'm from, uh, it's always been important to me, and I always just feel that I can do everything outside. So I love to spend time outside, um, go hiking, go to the beach, and do all these things with a lot of good friends of mine. And as in Hawaii, I've got a lot of uh, close people. and. Uh, family that are just really important to me now in Hawaii. Oh, for sure. And and Jakob, is there poke in Norway? Not yet, but that's one of my long-term dreams is to open a poke shop. So maybe we'll see one in Norway. If not, I'll come back to Hawaii and start one here. <laughs> so I'm excited. I love seafood. So poke has become a really main diet for me, just eating poke for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, which I did today. I had it for breakfast and I love it. Jakob, I have no doubt you're going to open up a poke store in Norway and probably one in Hawaii, right? Yep. And you better be there to be one of the first customers. Hope to see you with you. <laughs> I will be. I will be. And Jakob, I want to ask you, I mean, you, you, you and your teams made it to four consecutive national championship finals, winning two of them. What are some specific reasons why you think your teams made it to the championship finals and then you won two national championships? Yeah, I mean, a lot goes into that. And just putting yourself up for success on a daily basis is probably like the biggest key. So really just creating the right habits that you can follow throughout the years and just doing all those little things right. Because if you do that and then throughout a couple of weeks and months, you'll see, you'll see a big difference and you'll see that yourself, you're going to grow and you're going to learn a lot about yourself and the team you're surrounding yourself with. But overall, it's just doing about those little things every day, right? And then you experience success later on. I completely agree. It's, I always say little things matter, little victories matter. And those little victories lead to big victories. And when I watch you guys, uh, you know, through your, the last four years, I mean, there's, I mean, incredible teamwork and um, you guys have such great togetherness on, I mean, not just with the players on the floor, but even the, the players that are on the sidelines watching. What are your thoughts about that? Yeah, I mean, for us in the team, it's a brotherhood and it's something that we've been embracing throughout the years about being there for each other, having each other's back and just really working together as a unit to to become the best that we can be as a team and also individually. But it's all about the people that are around the team and that make things happen. So we're just really connected to our community, to our fans, 
the coaches are always there for us. We work together as a unit to uh, be successful. So I think just how close we are on the court and off the court has really helped us to get to that level. So, Jakob, I always wondered this, you know, after every point, I see your teammates, you, you guys all get together arm in arm. What are you specifically talking about when you guys are together like that after the point? Usually we talk about what we're going to eat after the game. So we're all <laughs> discussing what we're going to eat. No, on a real note, we're always talking about the game plan and just really making sure we're ready for the next point. So it's all these little key information that will be given to each other. And we try to encourage each other to really just play our best game. Um, and yeah, after one point is over, it's the next one that matters the most. So just really being focused on the next point, it's, uh, it's key to the game. So what are some specific details that you guys would like talk about? Like once the point's done, like what are you planning? What are you talking about for the next point? Yeah, so all that when we're in the game, it all comes down to tactics and executing our game plan. So it'll be anything from blocking to how we want to play our defense based off the serve. It's all a team, uh, a team effort. So we have to make sure that everyone's on the same, on the same page in that tactical uh, game plan. Nice. And Jakob, let's talk about setting. I mean, you are the best setter in the country. And I mean, there's times where I, I see you running left and then you are back setting all the way to the far right. I mean, how do you do that? You just gotta gotta rip it out. You gotta get comfortable doing what's uncomfortable for a lot of setters. And for me, I've been working out a lot of years, I wouldn't say I was able to do, make those sets a couple of years ago, but just from being able to be in the practice gym, a lot of the time and working with my hitters, I've been able to gain that trust and to gain that connection with my hitters. And uh, yeah, I mean, I like to, well, being a setter is just, it's so tactical and it's so based off decision-making. So just really thinking about all the options that you have when you're in the game and trying to work around your, your risk reward uh, zone. So for me, it's like, I will prepare a lot tactically for um for the games and also see what i can do with to be creative because that's also an important part about setting but i'm always more tired mentally and physically after a game and i think that says a lot about the position itself yeah i mean literally like you said i mean it's it comes down to preparation you've you've done those sets thousands of times just because i mean that's something that's completely under your control and you want to you want to actually try to achieve mastery and for you, how fun is it to have so many of those options uh, as hitters when you're setting? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm fortunate to have the best guys for their position in the country. And being able to have like that dynamic of a skill set that we have on the team is just unique. And we try to take advantage of that as much as possible. So that is kind of my job as a quarterback on the team to really put up those plays in the offense that will make us uh, be effective. And for us, it's been a lot of based off quick sets, but just being able to do the hard work and also be good when we're more often that has been has been really key to our team. And I think it's been well, it's been a lot of fun just to develop our offense because things have changed a lot over the years. So just having that confidence with each other has been has been a blessing to be around those uh, guys that we have at the team. Oh, that's for sure. I mean, it's so exciting to to be in the arena, you know, watching you guys. I mean, it's so special. I mean, just the feeling of it and the camaraderie. And I want to ask you about serving. I mean, you, you are now the all-time ace leader in serves at the University of Hawaii. And, and you, Jakob, you're the one that's starting the game every time serving. And I'm thinking, yeah, Jakob, here we go. <laughs> and what, right before you serve, what yeah. specifically is your serving routine? So I like to give a good look in the ball and give it a kiss. And then know it's on my side. No, I, I usually have a routine <laughs> that's just bouncing the ball. Really, I just take the time to really just break the game down and think about what how I can get the team out of the net and just put up the best way for our team to score the point. But I always kind of just take a second to myself and think about the best serve that I can put on, uh, put on the court and put pressure from the beginning. So I love serving because it's so just controlled of what you're doing with the ball. And it's all just you and the ball. So that's all you have to worry about. Then 
just getting your right toss and then jumping into it and hitting it, just being confident. So uh, yeah, I love serving and it's something I've done throughout the years that yeah, probably one of the most fun months, one of the most fun things about playing volleyball is just serving. And Jakob, I would assume that you again, like you said about setting preparation. I mean, you probably practiced thousands and thousands of serves, right? I have. I think just being able to to put as many reps, repetitions into the game as you possibly can, whether it's well, different parts of the game like serving, blocking, defense, it's it all helps your game. And for me, preparation is pretty much everything. Cause if you don't prepare, then you're gonna get caught in the game and you kind of like don't have the plan and you're you're getting lost. But just being one step ahead is always important. It's like playing chess, that I also do a lot. Uh it's so important to kind of build that strategy and really know what's going to happen in the game on your side or the other side. So just really building that anticipation skill, it's, yeah, it's become important. And Jakob, you know, after the national anthem and maybe during Hawaii Ponoi, I see you often looking around into the audience. What are you, what are you looking at or who are you looking at and why? That's a good question. Um, <clears throat> First of all, I just love to look around and kind of just have gratitude for the environment that we're in. So singing the Hawaii Ponoi, it's always like you're singing for you're singing for your home, your family, and the people that are around you. So I love to just share that moment with looking around and just having that joy and the aloha that we hear from everyone really joining us in the game. And then I always like to to look around and see uh well look at the future. There's always KK watching a game. So I want to be one of the well inspirations for them. So I really just try to share that moment with them and also inspire them throughout the game. So that gives me like a little extra boost. But the Hawaii Pono is guaranteed chicken skin moment for me. And it's been something that I really found um, in Hawaii that is just unique and it makes me feel at home. And Jakob, uh, over this past weekend, you and your teammates went and um, did a clinic for some youth volleyball, right? We did. We just had a clinic in Couple A uh, two days ago. And it was it was great. It was mostly because a couple of us on the team are leaving, like Demetrius leaving back to Greece today and Spurs also headed out. Um, so just being able to get back to the Keiki because really well, always we tell each other that we always do it for the Keiki and they are the future. And just being able to give back for everything that we got. Personally, I feel like I've got pretty much everything coming to Hawaii from the people. So just being there for the community and be that source of inspiration for the, the future has been yeah, it's a really giving moment. So I just really take a lot of pride in and helping the future of Hawaii volleyball that is so bright. There's a lot of great athletes and, and KK out there that will take Hawaii to the next level. Oh, that's so great of you and your teammates. And, and you and your teammates are such an inspiration to so many of our youth. And Jakob, um, you have both of my books. I want to ask you, what are some things that you think the books have helped you with? I think the books have really just helped elevate my mental game because in sports, things get so mental. Like it's something that Josh Walker, previous assistant coach at Hawaii, has been saying a lot that everything is mental. But really, I just learned that throughout the years that really just being a little bit better mentally also helps yourself uh, prepare physically and be at your best um, while you're on the court. So just really the books has helped me gain that like little extra confidence and really be in the game like when you're at a certain like tight score that you're always going to be ahead and that you are the best you could possibly be both physically and mentally. So I really enjoyed reading your books and that's really helped my, my mental game a lot. So I appreciate that. It's, it's really good information out there. So I recommend the books to everybody who's either inspired to do better in life um, on and off the court. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really about life's lessons uh, and and striving for that superior culture of excellence that I always say and having those superior 100%. discipline details. And that's that's what's going to make you even more elite, right, Jakob? 100%. I could not, I love to read, but those books are the ones that are the most uh, just effective at reading at having good information. And it really brings you 1% better from reading those books. So I just, yeah, happy to be able to do that. No, I love I love that you brought up right there the my one percent principle and and uh, Jakob, I want to ask you about Coach Charlie Wade. What are what are some things 
and some reasons why Coach Charlie is an effective coach? Yeah, so Coach Charlie is a really effective coach, uh, just breaking the game the game down to a couple of things that you have to focus on. He always talks about the how when we develop our game plan and how you can make a better play, how you can yeah, also make plays and just be good in the moment. But he's really the the leader of our culture and he's been embracing that uh well the local the local culture in Hawaii and how everything is important in what you do and on off the court and you have to be a great student athlete. So it's not just about what you're doing um on the court, but also in the classroom and the way you present yourself to the community. So it's really helped all of us just become great overall men. So it's been really important to make me more grown and the best version of myself. Yeah, no, I, I completely see that. And and for me as a coach, my top priority was to develop champion athletes of character first and then great tennis players second. And I can see Coach Charlie doing the exact same thing, which I admire so much. And, and Jakob, I want to ask you about that epic senior night. I was there and yep. wow, I mean, all of the fans, it was a sold out arena and all of the fans stayed to the very end. I mean, tell me, tell me about that senior night and how special it was for you. Yeah, I mean, I don't know where to start without crying. Uh, it's so special. And it was the first game that I watched on YouTube that I got inspired to, to come to the U.S. and to play for Hawaii where I would watch a uh, senior night of the former U.S. middle blocker, Henrik Moll, and I was just, wow, this is incredible. And the environment that uh, we're able to play in is just unique and it's something that I cannot take for granted. So just having that senior night myself, it was just, it came so quickly because I didn't know that five years would go that fast, but it did. So being there on the court, having the senior night, it was, yeah, emotional and just felt the connection with the fans and, everybody just really showing the aloha and then being able to do that in front of a cell like crowd is just it's unique it's something you get nowhere else in the world so I was really happy to, to have that experience and have that moment with uh, our seniors and the team and all the fans that came to watch the game well I'll tell you Jakob I had chicken skin there I mean how about you guys same I had chicken skin for the entire game I can tell you that straight up so it's just being able to play the game but then after that, it's just all the emotions just kind of let go and yeah, just being free out there. You got to, I'm always being myself on the court and off the court. So just having that moment with everybody in there, it's just, yeah, it's, it's something I'm remembering for the rest of my life. Oh, for sure. And, and Jakob, I want to ask you some, maybe some things about your teammates uh, specifically, if you can share some details or you know a quick story or you know something that maybe the public doesn't know and and i want to first start off with demetrius mucleus demi yeah demi demi is my man it's been yeah a lot of fun to set that guy he's so unique he's dynamic and he's one of the quickest hitters i've ever played with in my life but we have been able to work that out um and i think just the funny story that i have from him is that he always he's hungry for the ball so once i give it one set he will just get even more hungry for the next one that he will come up to me and he will kind of kind of take my like close me out and like tell me like hey Jakob, i want the next ball give me the next <laughs> ball again and he will just always make this call on his shoulder that probably a lot of you have seen there throughout the game he's always calling for the ball he's always into it so yeah love demi so when demi misses is he wanting the ball back on the next one? Even more so. Then he will grab me and he will kind of shake me like, hey, you better step in the next one because I'm going to kill the ball. I'm like, Dimi, I love that. You just been there, which is not too often, by the way, but I always know that if he makes one error, he will kill the next one. And he usually does, right? He always does. Yeah. <laughs> yep. That's the golden rule. He always does. Well, and that's that's yeah. the mindset of champions. I mean, when when he misses, it's like, I want this. I want it back right now. I want to like redeem myself. And I want to ask you what your thoughts are about Speedos Hakas. Yep. <clears throat> Another Greek freak on the team. We're happy to have two of them. Just really experienced as an incredible player. And he's always uh, been been really up in the leadership position and he's always always taking the team. Um to where I want to go. 
So he always brings that confidence. He never hesitates on a single play that he makes. And he brings a lot of calmness into the team. So it's really an important, important piece of our team. So, Jakob, what's something about Speedos that the public doesn't know? What is one thing that the public doesn't know about Speedos? No. Uh, <laughs> I don't really know. Well, he's actually a pretty decent basketball player from what I've seen in the gym. Really? Well, I mean, he's just, he's an incredible athlete. He loves to follow sport. Um, I can say, well, one thing that I can say is he doesn't eat enough poke because poke is, you know, it's a fuel fueled by Poké hashtag right there. He does need enough of it, but I know that next year he will really do that and it will take him, take him to the next championship. But no, I love Spiros. He's such an awesome guy and yep, love him. Fuel by Poké. <laughs> fuel by Poké. That is, that is the hashtag. Been living by it for the past five years. <laughs> it's probably your, your fuel of Poké probably rubbed off on Speedos by now or it's going to, right? I think so, probably because my, my mouth had been smelling so much poke in the game. So it really translates to the rest of the guys in the team. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Jakob, tell me about Cole Hoagland. Cole, he's uh, yeah, the most dynamic middle walker that I ever played with. He can make the craziest jumps from left to right. And just his skill set is unique. He's Undersized for his position, but he really makes that up in so many ways, offensively and defensively. So yeah, Cole is our he's our King Kong. Really yeah, pe established people call him off. King Cole, right? King Cole. Yep, he is a king and he makes the most incredible block moves that I've seen in my life. And I just wish I was like him, that I can make the same jump. But yeah, Cole's yeah. He's just unique in every single way. So what's what's something about Cole that that we don't know about? I don't know. <laughs> he's just he's just a great great local guy. You know, he embraces the the culture that his place is Nalo, uh, where he's from, and we always go to the beach together. So freshman year, we like had the car. Uh, that would always take take around and cruise beach and do all things together. And now. Sadly, um, the car stopped working, so it's been really just heartbroken because that's like a piece of history that kind of went into the books. But yeah, that's the just car, that's the car cold, died. Cold in his car, it died. It died. Yeah, let's just say it died. <laughs> no more can use it. But well, Cole is you know he's such a all around just an all around solid player, right? Yes, and he always does things with positivity. I've never seen anyone smile as much as Cole does, but it really brings uh, joy to everyone on the team. So the fact that he's able to do that, like in the most like stressful moments, he's just there smiling and having fun, and that's what it's all about. So that's really special to Cole. Okay, so next up, Jakob, tell me about next? Chaz Galloway. Chaz, yeah, wow, I don't know where to start. He's He's super gifted, and he's an incredible athlete. Just the things that he can do, he's rock-solid receiver, and the jumps that he can make to really hit the big, that's like his thing, is that he can fly into the ball. Eric Galloway for a reason right there, too. But he flies into the ball, and he's just really developed his game a lot over the years. And it's been a, yeah, it's been a gift to be with him and to practice him, and he's really pushing all of us to become better. You know, I, I talked with him last week at, at the um, Giovanni Pastrami uh, get-together with the Hawaii men's volleyball team, and you as well. And that was the one comment I told uh, Chaz was, I mean, he when he gets up there, I mean, he is like Air Jordan. I mean, it is Air Galloway. And I'm so happy you brought that up. But is that what you guys all think? That's, that's what we know. Nobody jumps like like Chaz does. So he's just, yeah, he's on a different different level compared to everyone else in the country and also probably the world. Uh, yeah, his skill set is just something you don't see every day at all. It's It comes once in a generation. So he really has that gift and he's using it really well. And it'll be a lot more to see here from next season. Oh, yeah, totally looking forward to that. And, and Jakob, uh, I want to ask you about Guilherme Voss. Tell me about Voss. Voss, Voss the boss. That's a sign that we see a lot in the in the arena, but really he is the boss. He's 
he may look like he's uh he's 35 year old, years old now but really inside he's just a young kid that loves to have fun and he really just has fun out there and he does his job really really well um and i can always i know that i can always trust him on different sets so especially with him i would run far away at the net and i also just try to fling it in right to his arm and he will bounce the ball uh but yeah g is an incredible guy incredible um also a student he will be in the library pretty much for a whole day if he has to work for and prepares for his finals so he really takes everything really important to him and yeah he's also probably the most emotional guy on the team that we got to see seen tonight just his emotions that he'll kind of let out that also made me cry because i was doing pretty good and then i look at g and then okay okay here's it's coming out i cannot <laughs> hold myself anymore but yeah he, that just means that he's so yeah he has a love for the team and the people and couldn't take that as anything more important. You're so right on senior night. I mean, uh, Voss started crying, and then all of you guys start crying. And then we have to follow all of us in the audience. <laughs> we're all crying. I mean, it just one thing led to another right there. Yep. Oh, and then I love seeing that sign from one of the fans that they call him Vossum. Right? He's awesome. Yep. He's <laughs> awesome all the way through. Now, Jakob, blocking. I want to ask you, I mean, what I love when I'm in the, the audience there, I mean, it, there's nothing like being there. It's so different than watching it on TV. But when you guys have a fantastic block, and then, I mean, everybody knows that's called a roof. But then the entire crowd in unison says roof. I mean, I love that. H how does that make you and your teammates feel? chicken skin i get even chicken skin now talking about it to be honest but it just it gives us a huge um energy boost in the game and just knowing that we're gonna work to get a block then the reward is even bigger hearing that roof and everyone in the crowd kind of goes together on that but i think really blocking is arguably the best feeling in volleyball just because you feel so dominant like getting getting the ball down and kind of stopping their their attack it really brings a lot of extra energy into the court and we have just looking at the block in the picture right there you see like the biggest triple block in the country um but yeah i think blocking is what separates us from a lot of other teams our ability to get a triple block and a lot of balls and just really be solid um i think it's something that you don't see a lot but we have that and we have some of the best blockers obviously yeah. <laughs> yes obviously <laughs> obviously so jakob i want to ask you you know when your opponent is going for a kill and i mean you guys are trying to dig it up i mean does it hurt yep but that's the beauty <laughs> of it it's got to, it's got to sting a little bit to be to win so you may, you have to take some hits sometimes i got a couple hits to my head in the game and what can i say it feels great because i know i was right there and i was able to have a chance to dig it but sometimes you just got to take the hit and get ready for the next one <laughs> yep you gotta You're take right that with there. a big smile even though you got the NCAA molten right in your, in your head, you still got to take that with a smile and keep keep trusting your defense. Yeah. So, Jakob, tell me what, what's what's going to be your future like? What What's the future goal of your volleyball career now? I want to keep playing. I don't know how long it's going to be for until my knees are completely hemorrhaging, but I want to play as long as I can just because I've, I just – Grew up, always wanted to play professional, so that's the next step for me. Um, and yeah, I also love to give back to the community, so maybe do come back, come back for a coaching job, and combine that with uh, my poke shop. We'll see what it comes down to. But yep, I just had a lot of fun playing volleyball, and I think this is the end at all. It's just getting started for me, really, on a professional level. So I'm happy to take the next step and ready for the next chapter in life. Oh, I'm so excited for you and Jakob. I want to ask you one more thing before we wrap up you have achieved greatness um how would you define greatness it's a great question i thought about this a lot and especially more after the season i really thought about what goes into success and i thought first that everything success is just about the trophies and the titles that you get but i learned that success is not only defined what you do on the court but also off the court so just the people that are around you, just being a source of inspiration um, 
inspiring the future, the Keiki. That is one of the most important things to me, at least. And just being a source of inspiration and influence the the less of people that are around you, because really it's the people that are yours around and so forth that put you up for success. So I found that the people, the community is really the the keystone in success. And it's it's the pillar. So it kind of drives you towards that goal that you have and really just finding the right people to be to be around. I haven't found anything greater. I've seen success and I think it's come through the Aloha spirit that we're able to to live here in Hawaii. It's it's a unique life and I couldn't take anything there for granted. And it's just I have my eternal gratitude towards the people of the islands and they've really been the most important uh piece to my success, but also the team success that we had in Hawaii. Well, Jakob, you are a fantastic role model, and it's been an honor watching you play for the University of Hawaii over the years and and really getting to know you as a person as well. I really want to thank you for joining me on the show today and sharing your insights. It's been the greatest honor, Rusty. Thank you for having me again. And I'm happy to go come back later, too, for another talk story a bit. Just really being able to uh, share my story has been, yeah, it's a gift. And I hope that it can provide some inspiration for the future out there as well. Young or old, it's all about becoming better every single day. So that 1% rule really, really is important on and off the court. You just really got to follow and live by that principle. Definitely. Thanks, Jakob. Yes. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. For more information, please visit RustyKomori.com. And my books are available on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. I hope that Jakob and I will inspire you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.